yeah, the idea of systems thinking is that you look at the whole system instead of just a single part, and you try to understand what is going on across the entire system. And if you if you do some effect, what it may have in other in other places, and how it may affect you again. So we talk about feedback loops in particular, which means A causes B, B causes C, but C then causes A again. So that we have problems where I do something here, and it makes some effect over here, which is perhaps positive, but then it comes back and affects me negatively, perhaps, over some time delay. Okay, so to so try to understand that. Yes, it's one of the best methods I know to look at public policy and whether it will actually achieve the results that you want to do. We have two kinds of feedback in systems thinking. We have reinforcing feedback and balancing feedback. And balancing feedback serves to keep the system the same. Often when we try to implement a policy, it's a good idea, but we aren't aware of these balancing feedbacks that are trying to keep the system the same, so we'll do it and it may make it a little better for a minute, but then it will go back because there are these other systems that are trying to keep it from changing. Yeah, so that's kind of hard. We talked about that this week, and one of the things is to, you know, talk to them and try to think about, um, so what, what don't you like is, is, not, is good to say what isn't working, but it's not as productive as saying, okay, imagine if things could be the way you'd like them. What, is that, what does that feel like to you? What does that look like to you? What kinds of things would you say or do differently than you're doing now? How would other people act toward you? How would the things that you're doing to, to, uh, in service for the government, the people you're serving, how would that work better? So one of the things that you run into is that people are averse to risk. So innovation gets stopped because people are afraid to try to do something different. People are afraid to, um, to say, okay, I'm gonna, this is something I came with and this is gonna work. They won't even tell anyone. I have this great idea, but I'm not gonna tell anyone because no one's gonna listen to me. No one's gonna do it, or they're gonna think I'm silly for doing it. Um, or I have, I have some personal stake that I'm in this idea that I will lose if I share it with people. And I, I will be uh, shamed, or I will be rejected, or something like that. These kinds of risks tend to stop people from innovating. If you want to innovate more, if you want to be more creative, you have to think for yourself whether you think it's a good idea and what you could do to, to change something. And then you also need to be able to feel comfortable. You need to get past that risk part. You need to be, feel comfortable engaging others in a discussion. Some things that stop innovation in public policy are that people get very, I don't want to say religious, but it's kind of like they're like, this is my idea, and this, I can't put this idea, this is the way that will fix it, right? Right. When there may be other things they're not aware of. Their idea is usually a good place to start a discussion, but you want to be able to listen to what other people's perspectives are and what, what they know that you don't know that can help come to a better solution in the end, a more innovative solution in the end.